So, Alder Lake is out now, and we've heard so much about this new CPU platform. Not necessarily from Intel, obviously, but still. So many leaks had popped out, and finally, it's here. Or at least, part of the lineup has been announced. And today, we take a look at those CPUs and how much the whole ecosystem for an Intel system would cost compared to an AMD one. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Alright, so let's see what Intel has. Right off the bat, Intel's benchmarks show that the 12900K beats AMD's lineup in both price and performance. Once again, that's according to Intel. So take this as you will. The 12900K, as we already knew, has 16 cores and 24 threads. And according to Intel, it beats the 5950X in seven out of nine games tested. But this CPU is priced at around $150 to $170 less. Newegg sells theirs for $649, and the KF version, the one without graphics, is even cheaper on Newegg at $629. Then there's the 12700K. The core config is eight performance cores and four efficiency cores. Price-wise, it's $449 on Newegg, and the KF model is $384 USD per thousand units. Unfortunately, I can't find any retailer prices just yet. Price-wise, it would compete with the 5800X, but performance wise it should also jump a class to match the 5900x that's pretty good and then finally we have the last one that was announced d12 600k the core configuration is 10 cores and 16 threads and it is the cpu that i predicted would be the value king for unlocked processors well the price per 1000 units is 289 it's currently sold at 319 dollars so considering the leaks show it beats even the best amd cpu in single core and manages to beat the 5800X in multi-core. And adding to that is the price point. It should compete with a 5600X. Yeah, when it comes out and until AMD retaliates, it's going to be the value king. But value doesn't mean anything if the rest of your system costs you an arm and a leg, right? So let's talk about that. First, there's power. Yes, the 12900K is very power hungry. That's because the clocks are so high and Intel pretty much just said fuck it and went for the highest clocks despite the diminishing returns. So it will consume 241 watts when fully loaded. The 12700K on the other hand is more reasonable. Its power limit is set to 190 watts, so that's what it will run at when loaded. Still high, but honestly, it's not that bad at all for a 12-core CPU with these kinds of clocks. And lastly, the 12600K. It actually rides at about 10 watts above the 5800X when on a load. The 5800X or any models above that from AMD typically consume about a maximum of 145 watts when bone stock and boosting. So for the 12600K that beats the 5800X, its power consumption is actually pretty good. Now here's something else related to power. Whether you plan on buying a 5950X or 12900K, all you need to make sure is that you get a power supply that's 750 watts or more. And that's not just my recommendation. Uh, for a GPU like the 3080, Nvidia actually recommends using a 750 watt power supply. And if you're saying, yeah, but the CPU wasn't out just yet, the 11900K also consumes consumes 250 watts when it's fully loaded. So yeah, they knew their power requirements when they launched the 3080 and 3080 Ti. So that was the power requirement part. Now, one big argument that some of you guys make is that one will consume a lot more from the wall, but it's not enough to make a big impact. For example, if I gamed five hours a day, five days a week for an entire year at 12 cents per kilowatt, it would cost me about $15 more at the end of the year if I owned an Intel system instead of an AMD one. And that's if it was pinned at 100% during the games, which we know they won't be. But power does have another side and that's heat. And yes, you will need a good cooling solution for the highest end CPUs, at least for the 12900 and 12700K. A typical 240 AIO from let's say Corsair or Cooler Master can cool down around 200 to 230 watts. So that's a no-go for the 12900K and you're just passing for the 12700K. 
So your cooling solution might cost you more compared to the AMD platform. And you might want to open the window because all that heat gets dumped into your room. And trust me, you can feel it when 250 watts of heat is pumped into the room from a computer. So that was power, cooling, and heat. What about the memory? DDR5, it's way more expensive, right? Yep, just don't buy it. It's not ripe, it's not mature, and you can save a lot of money there, both on the dim side themselves and on the motherboard side. Which of course brings me to the motherboard. Now, this one is pretty clear. Z690 is definitely more expensive. If we look at the cheapest X570 board from AMD, we can see that it starts at around $155 on Newegg with this ASRock Phantom Gaming 4. And on the Intel platform, the same model is $180. So yeah, there is a $25 premium here. Anything above that though, and really, you are choosing to pay more. Whether it's because you want more I.O., want a specific set of ports, or you want a better power delivery system for overclocking, or you simply want DDR5. It's your choice to pay more, but it's true that across the board, there is a about $25 to $40 premium between AMD and Intel motherboards. So yeah, I think we've covered pretty much all of the components, right? And how much more is Intel's platform? Well, I'm gonna say that it's about $30 for the motherboard, and $30 for the uh, upgrade and cooling solution. All in all, you're technically still saving money by going for uh, an Intel platform. Wow, I never thought I'd say that. But in all seriousness, what do you guys think about the, uh, the, the whole, you know, comparison? Let me know what you think down below. In any case, guys, it was interesting to say the least to sort of tabulate all the information. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Let me know with a like and a comment. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video, right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care. Rolling them dices, I love it, I love it, I'm fine. Canvas for faces, I'm painting these pictures of mine. Rolling them dices, I love it, I love it.